Jackery recently asked if I'd like to try out their new Solar Generator 2000 Plus portable power station, and it's got some really great features, like 3000 watt continuous output and a 2042 watt hour capacity. I've recently done a full review on it, and I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to check that out for some more of the technical specs and my thoughts on it. The Solar Generator 2000 Plus is a kit which is made up of the Explorer 2000 Plus portable power station and a 100 watt Solar Saga solar panel. The review got me thinking, could I design, 3D print, laser cut and assemble a mini ITX computer using a single charge of the Explorer 2000? 2042 watt hours is a lot of power for a portable power station, but would that be enough to last when using my computer for a couple of hours worth of design time and possibly a full day of 3D printing? It'll then also need to power the tools and computer through assembly and setup. To start I need to set some ground rules. I'm going to use a single charge of the Explorer 2000 Plus, so I'll charge it up at the beginning of the project and then I can only use power from it to power any computer equipment, printers, tools or chargers that I need to get the computer designed, printed, assembled and booted up. I also can't use any previously stored power in battery powered devices. If I have to use a battery powered device like my laptop, then I'll drain it completely before starting and I'll need to use the Explorer 2000 Plus to charge it up as well. So let's get the power station charged up. There are three ways to charge it. The fastest is going to be plugging it into mains power, which will fully charge it from empty in just two hours. The second way is through solar power. This varies by how many panels you connect to it and how strong the sun is, but with six of their 100 watt panels, you can get it fully charged in just five and a half hours. The third is through a car's 12 volt DC socket. We're heading into summer here and we have nice bright long days. So I'm going to use the solar option. The panel is a 100 watt foldable design, which is IP65 waterproof and includes integrated USB ports for charging directly from the panel. I've got it hooked up to the Explorer 2000 Plus and it's set up outside in full sun to charge. At the moment, in the morning sun, it's outputting around 60 to 70 watts. By midday, this was up to about 83 watts, so it's still going to be a while, but that is an improvement and it's free energy. After two days out in the sun charging, it's now full and ready to start the challenge. So now let's take a look at the components that I've chosen for the PC build. I want this to be a compact but still reasonably powerful computer. So I've gone with this ASRock B550M Mini ITX Form Factor motherboard. For the processor, the Ryzen 5 5500 is a good balance between value for money and performance. And it also doesn't require a large amount of power, so we can get away with a compact power supply. It comes with a basic cooler to keep the cost down as well. For graphics, since the Ryzen 5 5500 doesn't have integrated graphics, I've got a dedicated Radeon RX 6600 GPU. This card also strikes a good balance between value for money and performance. Lastly, I've got two 8GB sticks of DDR4 RAM and a 1TB NVMe SSD. To power the computer, I've got a 500 watt Silverstone TFX power supply. This setup should be perfect to run most modern games at 1080p with reasonably high settings. In terms of layout, I'm going to go with the power supply beneath the motherboard as it's got a fan on top, and I'll then mount the GPU vertically on the back of the motherboard to save space. This GPU is quite big, so it's going to be the limiting factor in how compact we're able to get the case. So let's get started with the design. For that I'm going to be using my MacBook, which is now dead. So let's plug it into a USB-C port on the Explorer 2000 Plus and use that to charge and power it. My MacBook uses around 90 watts when charging up from dead, but this should settle at under 10 watts once charged. We can then open up Fusion 360 to do the design. I'm going to go with an almost square design that'll just fit into my 3D printer's 256 by 256 mm print bed. The main body of the case will be a single part for rigidity. I'm then going to laser cut an acrylic panel for the middle, which will be used to mount the motherboard and GPU onto. The side panels will each be removable with cutouts for the fans. I'm going to pattern the side panels with a hexagon mesh, but I'll do this with an infill trick in the slicer rather than trying to do it in Fusion 360. I also want to add some text cutouts to the side panels, which I think will look pretty cool once the hexagon mesh is in place. 
Halfway through the design, I've used about 5% of the capacity, which is a bit less than I was expecting. To make the front panel more appealing, I've added an insert which will have the same hexagon mesh pattern as the sides, and then there's a cutout for the power button as well. The back has got cutouts for the power supply, motherboard I.O. shield, and the GPU. The GPU mounting arrangement is a little bit unconventional, as the case already takes up the whole print bed. I've made up a small bracket that'll need to be screwed onto the back of the case during assembly. I've also added some legs that screw onto the underside of the case. And that's the design complete. That's used 9% of the total charge, which is about 184 watt hours. That leaves quite a lot for printing and laser cutting, but as with most projects, there's a strong possibility that I'll need to come back and make tweaks to the model, and I may even have to reprint some parts at a later stage. Now we need to export the model files for the components and then open up in the slicer software. I'm using Bamboo Slicer and I'm going to use black PLA for the body of the case and red PLA for the sides, legs and front accent. As I mentioned before, the case and side panels only just fit onto my print bed. With all of the slicing done, we've now got 86% of the capacity available for printing and laser cutting. So let's get that started. My 3D printer uses a lot of power to warm up, just under 1000 watts, but this will drop down to about 150 to 200 watts for the duration of the print. While the printer is running, I'm going to use a second AC output on the Explorer 2000 to power my laser cutter. We'll use this to cut out the acrylic internal panel to mount the motherboard and GPU onto. I'm cutting this from a piece of 3mm grey tinted acrylic. I'll include a 3D printable design in the design files if you don't have a laser cutter, but acrylic works really well as a backing plate because it's quite rigid. The laser uses about 500 watts, which is added to the 150 to 200 watts that the 3D printer is already using, but this is only for a short period of time, so it won't make much difference to the remaining capacity. With that cut, we can move back to finishing off the 3D printing. With all of the components printed out, we're now down to just 44% capacity. That's quite a lot left to get through for what we still need to do, but that's if we don't have to reprint anything. So I really hope the parts all fit together properly and that the PC components actually fit into the case. For the assembly, we need to add a couple of M3 brass inserts into the main body of the case. To melt these into place, I'm using a soldering iron with a brass insert tip. This too is going to be running off the Explorer 2000. We need four on each side to mount the side panels onto, four to hold the acrylic panel in the middle, and three to hold the graphics card at the back. We also need to add two to each of these graphics card support brackets. The front panel is press fitted into place, and we can add a couple of drops of super glue to secure it. I didn't want to put any screws through it, as it doesn't need to be removable. In keeping with the rules, I charged my USB-C screwdriver on the power station, so that's ready to go. First we can install the acrylic center panel with some M3 by 8mm button head screws. I'm going to add some M3 by 6mm nylon standoffs to it to mount the motherboard onto before screwing it into place. You could use brass standoffs as well, but I like the black look and with the nylon you don't have to worry about shorting components if they come loose. Now we can assemble and add our motherboard. First let's install the processor and heatsink. 
The heatsink comes with thermal compound pre-applied, so we don't need to add any to the CPU. Then we can add our RAM. And lastly, let's add our SSD. We can then push our faceplates into the case cutout and then mount the motherboard onto the standoffs and secure it with some M3 nylon screws. Before we add in the power supply, we need to install the legs and add the riser cable for the GPU. The legs are held in place with some M3 button head screws and nuts, which go through some rubber feet for vibration isolation. The riser cable plugs into the PCI Express slot and then runs under the center panel and to the GPU side of the case. The power supply goes in underneath the motherboard and is held in place with four screws at the back. The graphics card then gets mounted onto the opposite side of the motherboard. At this stage I found my first issue. I hadn't considered that the PCI Express riser cable has quite a large plug on it. This makes the depth of the card a lot more than what I had allowed for. Even if I remove part of the center panel, there isn't enough room between the card and the motherboard for this plug. So I ordered a second one with a straight connector instead of a 90 degree one. This improves the depth issue, but it was still too wide for the space in the case. So I had to remove the shroud around the PCB joints and this allowed just enough room for it to fit into the case. This obviously puts strain on the joints, which is not ideal, but I don't plan on moving the computer around much, so it shouldn't be a big issue. I'm going to leave it like this in my build, as changing the card position would mean having to reprint all of the case components, and I'm pretty sure I don't have enough power left for that. The best solution would be to find a more compact 90 degree riser, and allow for a cutout in the center panel behind the motherboard for some additional clearance. The card is then held in place with a few brackets. The main one at the back is secured with two M3 by 16 mm screws, and then the card to the bracket with some 8mm screws. The one at the top clamps the card with another M3 by 16mm screw. I was going to put this inside support in place with some M3 by 8mm screws, but I'm rather going to use these holes to zip tie the GPU to pull it down into the case. First let's plug our power supply into it. It's a really tight fit, the graphics card only just makes it into this case, but I also like that it's a nice compact build. Lastly, let's add the power button to the front. I've pre-soldered leads to it and we can plug these into the motherboard pins. Now we can plug our power supply into the motherboard and close it up. The side panels are also held in place with some M3 by 8mm button head screws. The GPU side aligns really well with the fans, but it looks like I got my guess on the motherboard side a little bit off. I'm going to tweak that by a few millimeters and get it printed out again with my remaining charge. I've got 39% left and these panels each use less than 10%, so I think that's worthwhile. The new panel's now made up and I've only used an additional 7%, so I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Now let's see if I got it right this time. So it looks like it lines up perfectly. And that's the case complete. We just need to set up the BIOS and install Windows. I'll do that with the computer running off the Explorer 2000 as well. We can see we've got our Ryzen 5 processor detected and our two 8 gig sticks of RAM, and we can see our one terabyte SSD. We've got 32% remaining, and I'm drawing about 50 watts with the computer and monitor running off it, but it is essentially at idle without an OS running. 
Now that we got Windows installed, let's try running Furmark at 1080p. I get a score of 7691, with a maximum GPU temperature of 57 degrees and a total system power draw of about 160 to 170 watts. So there's definitely a lot of room for overclocking. I ran the test two more times and I still got an average score of around 7700. The GPU temperature increased to a maximum of 64 degrees. Running Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with all settings on very high, we get about 150 to 200 frames per second which I'm pretty happy with for this size computer. The power draw is also a little under 180 watts. So I managed to design, print, assemble and configure a mini ITX computer using a single charge of the Explorer 2000 Plus, and I even had 17% to spare. Even better was that the charge was free using solar power, so if you're interested in getting your own Jackery Solar Generator 2000 Plus kit, I'll leave a link in the video description. I think they're really useful to have around the house, or to take out on day trips or camping trips for portable power. It's quiet, clean, and the power is essentially free with the solar panel. Let me know what you think of the computer build in the comment section below. I also have the case linked in the video description if you'd like to have a go at printing and building your own mini RTX computer. I've tried to keep the design generic enough that you'll be able to use different components if you'd like to. I've also included solid side panels as an option so that you can use a different cooler or GPU and you won't have the fan cutouts in the wrong places. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.